Welcome back to Jazz 101. In this video, we're going to take improvisation to the next step. So last time we were simply working with one scale, the C major scale in one octave. So it was right here. And of course you play it up and down going over a 2-5-1 in C major, or in other words, D minor 7, G7, and C major 7. Putting that together, it sounds really good. So today what we're going to do is learn how to target the chord tones for each one of those chords. So we're going to start with that D minor 7. In this position, our D, of course, is at that 7th fret of the 3rd string. The other notes of that arpeggio are F, 6th fret on the 2nd string, A, on the 1st string 5th fret, and then finally C, which is the 7th, 8th fret on string 1. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, all inside that scale. So you just want to remember D, F, A, C, and then practice it backwards. C, A, D, F. And of course, as you go, you can start adding a little bit of phrasing to that. and just play around with it until you are really comfortable knowing exactly where each one of those fingers should go for each chord. Now when you get to the G7 chord, because of how the notes fall in that scale pattern, you're not going in a direct arpeggio. Instead, you're starting on the G, eighth fret of string two, then you're going up to the B, the third of the chord on the first string, seventh fret, then we're gonna jump back to the seventh fret, on string three, because that's our D note, which is the next note in the arpeggio, but we're dropping it an octave so that it fits in that eighth note pattern. And then finally, we have the seventh, which is the F on string two, fret number six. All right, so we have that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And just do that over and over again so that you know where those notes can be found inside that scale pattern. Then next, you would do both. So you'd have the D, G, and then finally you would learn the C chord arpeggio, which starts right on the root of the scale. Then the next note, the E, is on the next string, fifth fret. Go up to the eighth fret for that G that we already played in the last arpeggio, and then the seventh, which is on the seventh fret of string one. That's that B note again. So we have two notes that are the same in C major seven and G seven. So then you would put all of that together into one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And just practice that over and over until you know where those targeted notes are. And then you can start creating melodies from that. But first, what I like to do is have a loop going in the background uh, to play over that uses those three chords. So we'll start with the D, G, C. And then just keep doing that until it's easy and comfortable. Then your next step, once you've got that, is to just use those targeted notes to come up with a melody. So let's see what I come up with right here on the spot. All right, so go get to practicing that. It's really a lot of fun. It helps you to focus by having just a few notes to work on rather than worrying about the whole scale. So I will see you next time where we'll start into modes. Also, too, if you're having trouble remembering what notes these are, a great way to learn that is to get this book, The Missing Method for Guitar Note Reading Series Book 2. In this book, it gives you everything you need to learn the notes in all 12 keys from frets 5 through 8. So by the time you're done with this book, you're going to know every note in that position. It makes it easier to learn those arpeggios and scales and to improvise. So check it out at themissingmethod.com and I will see you next time.